must be time for a cheeky look at the Maximus 10 apex and Maximus 10 formula. Okay, so I know I am in a strange filming location and what's happened is there are literally just these two boards in the country. So there's only one of each. They've actually been flown over from Asus HQ and I've had to come into the UK offices to get an hour with these videos or with these boards so that I can make you a quick video. Now they are powered, as you can see, just so that we can see the lights. And there are some really nice lights, but also they've made the display that you may have seen on the um, X299 Deluxe and the uh, Rampage 6 Extreme. They've made that much bigger <clears throat> and they've put the, it right underneath the CPU socket so it's going to sit right above your graphics card. You can have it displaying your own logo, you can have it um, doing some animations if you want as well, showing CPU temperature, it's totally up to you. Now we are here to look at the aesthetics but it does give us a good chance to have a look at the lighting as well. There is lighting all around the back on the apex which it doesn't look particularly pretty the fact that it's just SMDs or SMRGBs whatever they would like to call them but when it's in your case and it's up against the uh, back panel of your case it'll obviously look really really nice. So what I'm going to do is disconnect them one at a time and give you a good look around the boards. Now, I'm not allowed to show you a performance or anything like that, but I'm gonna give you a good skim around the actual board itself so that you can get an idea what's going on. And let's face it, we all do like to make sure our um, hardware uh, matches the way we want the rest of our rig to look. Now you can see, I'm trying to shimmer it for you there, but. You've got the, the normal kind of plastic shroud that's going around, but there is a metal plate up at the top as well. And the formula really does feel like quite a premium board. The fact that there is a back plate on it as well does add a lot of weight. And they've also gone with the fitted IO shield around the back. You can see that we've got Wi-Fi built in as well. It's quite a lot of connectivity around the back. You can also see that we do have onboard video as well because that might give us a little bit of a hint about CPUs, um, you know, what might be going on with the CPUs. But in this segment, they do anyway. So that would be where our little display was. If we have a look up in the top corner, you can see that there are two massive VRM heat sinks and you can see all the power regs underneath. So there are an awful lot of phases but you can count them yourself because it's again something that I'm, it's not meant to say too much about. You can see the EK logo there and if I was to unscrew this, you can use your normal G1 quarter inch barbs as you normally do and you can see the copper underneath with the um, formula stuff and you'll be able to hook that up to your own water cooling loop. Power and reset up on this side. You can also see that we've got a PCI poster as well. This is a high amp fan, so this is a very for very high draw fans, which is very good for overclock, and it's also set to run at 100% straight out the box. You can see that you've got your CPU optional and your CPU fan here. There are two more fan headers nestled over here as well, and then the others are kind of scattered around the bottom of the board. You can also see that we've got a retry button down at the bottom, mem okay, but if you have a look at all the RGB headers, so you've got two normal four pin RGB headers and then you've also got the three pin headers which are the addressable ones where you can uh, have them animated um, and chasing each other and different lights can swap places and th th there's a lot of options that you've got. This is an M.2 slot, yes it's vertical but there is another one underneath the heat sink as well and you can see the three screws on there. So, it, like I said, it was just a quick skim around preview for us to have a look at it. I'll give you a good slow look around. And then you can stop, pause. And sadly, this is pretty much all I'm allowed to show you. But then when we come to the Apex, now the Apex um, only has two memory slots straight off the bat and that's because it's um, pretty much built 
to be more of an overclocking board, but they've also gone with some pretty hardcore aesthetics on it as well. The Apex is now kind of fairly well known for the quite dramatic cutouts, and that follows suit on this board as well. And you can see they've got another large cutout at the top. Two memory slots, that should help us with memory performance. This extra slot here is where you can clip your M.2 in. It comes with a special mount, um, which will hold two M.2s. And again, this should help us have it being that little bit faster. Top right-hand corner, RGB, not sure on the, let's face it, if you use it for uh, an aesthetics board, these are gonna come in handy. You've got your poster LEDs here, which also, you know, they, you get used to the order that they change in. You can you start to tell when things are going wrong. You've also got um, pause LED. You've got some CPU LEDs down here as well, PCI Express. These are so that you can turn your PCI Express lanes off. So you've got dip switches for that. Voltage pickup points, start, reset. And then uh, you've got the retry button and the safe boot button. I did just have to read out that yen, yes. The fans that are this color, you can see that they're that funny green color. I'm just looking to see if there are any other ones. There are, they're down here. They're the full speed fan headers. They literally do just run at uh, 12 volts continuously. You've got an AIO pump header here. You've got another fan header over here. That's one of the uh, chassis fans. Then you down here, you've got CPU fans. I'm not too sure about having the CPU right fan down, right down there, out of the way. But anyway, VRM heatsink, as you can see, isn't really that tall at all. So they must be pretty confident about the cooling. But you do get a very large um, IO shield, and that is all metal. It's a big chunk of aluminium going on. And that is literally just to clean the lines up on the back of the board. I don't think it's actively cooling anything at all. So anyway, a uh, very nice looking heatsink. It's gonna be interesting to see if this does get too hot, but there's obviously there, there's quite a lot of surface area there and the channels as well, but again, we'll just have to see. Um, other things, we've got USB 3 here, extra power here. If you're going to be using a lot of graphics cards for benching, you don't need to plug that in for normal use. Got the water cooling section again down this bottom left hand corner you can see the water flow in and out temperature section there it's nice to see that we've got two usb um, internals as well or external because they would go for the outside of the case or what most of us use them for now aios or power supplies and the like um, these you can make your own you don't have to have thank you i think they just printed that up for us but the, you do get blanks in the box and you'll be able to either cut them out by hand or you can um, take the sizes and get them cut out so that you can have them light up yourself and you can unbolt them and move them around as well. So two eight pins is the only other thing that I really need to say about with that board because at the end of the day, like I said, it, it is their overclocking board, but it is also about the aesthetics as well. So I've obviously an infinite amount of travel that I've had to do for this. I was at EGX and then after EGX I came here and I'm not being funny, the ACES office is about five hours away from my house. But I've done that just so that you guys get to have an early look at those boards. I would love to hear your thoughts underneath. I'd like to know uh, whether these are going to be on your shopping list or your wish list and what you think to the fact that we've been able to give you a nice cheeky early look. But for now, at least, even though you've not really seen my face, this is Tiny Tom Logan with another video for you. Out. And you get a ding. Ding.